Dedication is Him, a phrase befitting the legacy of Hall of Fame inductee John Moon. Through decades of coaching at Seton Hall University, coupled with an ongoing dedication to cultivating athletes in his home state of New Jersey, Moon's guiding touch produced a perpetual garden with deep roots. On the insistence of his football coach at Linden High, Moon took his halfback skills to the track. And while he arrived at Tennessee State University on a football scholarship, he found the cinders is where he would shine in full. While at TSU, he equaled the world record in the 100-yard dash, running 9.3 seconds to win the 1960 NAIA crown. From there, Moon marched to West Point, competing for the U.S. All-Army team. Over that time, Moon matched the all-time world best in the 100 meters and famously handed the legendary Bullet Bob Hayes the final loss of his career. He continued his military service deep into his coaching days, reaching the rank of commander within the U.S. Naval Reserve. His coaching career began at Rahway High School, where he turned a dominant program into a juggernaut that won 33 championships. In 1972, Moon was named Seton Hall's head coach, and waves of success followed immediately. The Pirates won back-to-back -back national titles in the men's mile relay, including the first time the event was ever conducted at the NCAA Indoor Championships in 1973. In 1994, his women's squad swept national indoor and outdoor 400-meter individual and 4x4 relay crowns. His teams also won 12 Big East championships, 8 IC4A crowns, and 7 Penn Relays championship trophies. Moon served on a number of Team USA coaching staffs as well, including as the lead assistant coach for the U.S. men at the 2000 Sydney Olympic Games. In addition, he served as president for the IC4A, Big East track coaches, and the Metropolitan Track Conference. I'm in love with the job, he has said. Track and field has been my life. You don't see millionaire coaches. I'm not in it for the money. The rewards come from the delight of winning races, being recognized by peers, and seeing athletes graduate to the real world. That, to me, is total success. That is John Moon, Hall of Fame, Class of 2021. Fifty years, I can't believe it. I mean, 50 years. I... Well, first of all, let me thank the committee for selecting me. That is, that is an honor. So I'd like to thank you for uh, having me in your dreams and decide to give me this particular honor. And I'd like to thank my family. Uh, unfortunately, my wife is not here. But at the table over here, I have my, my daughter, I'm, I'm proud of her because we both graduated from, from Tennessee State with degrees. My young brother there, he always remind me that when he was a freshman, he broke my freshman record, you know, you know what have you. Uh, uh, my niece there, to have my sister, uh, we also graduate, have degrees from Seton Hall University. Uh, my grandson and my daughter-in-law there, to, uh, they helped me, and uh, thank you guys for being here. Okay, uh, I'd like to thank all my former athletes, and I, I have so many of my, I hate to leave one or two of them out. So, will all my former athletes who are here now, will you please stand? Come on, stand up. One I got to mention is, is one of the athletes over there is, is come from my high school team back in, oh Christ, uh, <laughs> uh, I think it was 68. You know, he was one of my first athletes to uh, go to college. He went to uh, Catholic University and uh, I think he ran 148 down there, but that was an honor. He was my, one of my first to move on to the, uh, to the college ranks, okay? And one of my first, um, I call it better quality athletes. In 72, I got Orlando Green. Uh, I was told that he was the uh, cross country coach of the year down here at, uh, in Florida. Orlando, where is he at? Will you stand up? One of my first from Barbados. Now, he got down to uh, 146, okay? <laughs> 146. Congratulations, thank you, you know. And um, I got I to gotta say, shout out to Roberto Vivas. 
Uh, he just was named the coach of the year, you know, in, uh, in the state of uh, New York. Roberto, one of my athletes, long time ago at the beginning, but he just went into the Hall of Fame for the state of New York. So, Roberto, congratulations. Okay. You got to forgive me because I can't see too well, so I got to look at this small print that I wrote myself, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I want to recognize it's very rare that when you come to a place like this, you have some of your elite, elite, you know, executives. And I'm fortunate today to have two uh, executives from Seton Hall. I have the uh, uh, executive vice president of Seton Hall and also the athletic director. Well, both of them, Pat Lyons, will you stand up? And Brian Phelps, stand up, please. Okay. Okay. Thank you for... Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. You know, um, in this sport, especially when you get to be an old man, you get a lot of names, okay? Uh, I've been called hubby. I've been called boss, dad, granddad, professor, honey, which I like, okay, <laughs> track, and on a golf course, sometimes, sometimes they call me Tiger Moon. Okay. <laughs> when I was called Pop Pop, I thought that was utopia because with Pop Pop, that's um, it's love and money. Okay. But you know what? The title of coach, you know, is sincere. A lot of times we don't know the coach's name, but we know he's a coach. That is respect. And I think I honor that title more so than, than all of them, because it means a lot. It's come from the heart. And when they call me sir in the military, they have to. They have no choice, because they got to respect what's on my shoulders. OK, but when, they, when the kids call you coach, I mean, yesterday I was walking through the hall, and I, they were stopping me and calling me coach. They don't realize I got a lump in my throat. It's like, wow, that's, that, is, that is respect. And I think we need more of that, you know, in this country, regardless of what party we belong to. <laughs> you know, I got to look at my life and I can say, when did this journey start? When, did, when I started to be an athlete and a coach and in the military and all this, and I go back to when I was coming up, and my parents did not want me to play with the local people in, in the neighborhood, so she got me playing the piano. I hated the damn thing, okay? <laughs> me and the piano didn't get along, so I started playing the saxophone. Me and the saxophone didn't get along. Okay, so what I started doing is staying after school, and I told my mother that I was getting enrichment tutoring. But actually, I started playing sports but I didn't tell her that because she would say, no, no, okay? But that's how I started, by saying I'm doing extra work and uh, I didn't have to wash the dishes, I had to take out the garbage, and most of all, I didn't have to take care of my little brother, okay? My little brother. But that's the start of there. From there, I moved on to college, and I was lucky in college I had two outstanding roommates. One was academically off the chart, that was Ralph Boston. He became the Olympic champ gold medal winner. Uh, he taught me a lot. He was a biochemistry major. He stayed in the library, so I, I started following him. The other one was uh, Dick Barnett. He played with the New York, uh, New York Knicks, and he taught me how to play chess. He was fantastic. Now he's Dr. Barnett. You know, uh, those who, your old guys like me, you can remember, those names, what have you. So, uh, after active duty, start teaching. Uh, my high school team, we won about 98 dual meets. We lost about three. Um, and I was being offered the position of vice principal. So, okay, uh, let me uh, uh, move on with my education. I was working on my doctorate, and uh, in my project was the athletic de director of Seton Hall. So we, we became very good friends. And um, he convinced me to say, look, 
We need a coach at Seton Hall, and I was no way thinking about going into uh, uh, coaching because I was my parents had geared me, and also the, the city of uh, Linden and Rawway had geared me to be the principal and, and superintendent eventually. That was my projected way. But you know what? It just was not me. It just was not me. Okay. So in a way, I took a big cut in salary. I went to Seton Hall for the big money of $5,000. <laughs> Everybody thought I was crazy. I thought I was crazy also. I mean, how in the hell am I going to make it? $5,000. But you know what? And a lot of you guys can relate to this. Once you love the sport, once you're a jock, it's hard to get it out of you. With all the education and everything I had going, it just, it just, it just was not what wasn't me. Okay. Uh, after one year after Seton Hall, uh, I did very good. I got a raise, ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars. Okay. Of course, times have changed now. But what I'm saying to you is that that was something I wanted to do. And the money was not an issue. How did I make it? Hey, I had to work my tail off and selling real estate and doing different things and what have you. But you know what? I did something that I wanted to do, and I was, I was enjoyed with that. Okay? Uh, some of the events that I remember in, in, my, in my career, I go back to my high school days. I remember starting a program at high school. We didn't have a track, indoor, outdoor. We had to wait until the faculty members leave, and we had to put cones in the park and uh, train in the parking lot. When they get too cold and icy, then they, they allowed us to run in the hallways, what have you. So that was the beginning of that program. And what happened? Hey, we had, um, without a track, what have you, we had um, 98 wins and three losses. That was just, it was just fantastic because it's something that I really wanted to do. Uh, I remember recruiting, and I go to the individual's house, and he said, you know, Coach Moon, always really, really wanted to, to run for Seton Hall. I said, wow. He said, I said, why? Because, you know, my father ran for you. I said, wow, that's pretty nice. Let me fast forward, go to another recruit. You know, Coach Moon, I really want to run for you. I said, why? He said, because my grandfather ran for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I, so, so I said, let me go home, get my AARP book out, and get the coupons. Because <laughs> look what happened, you know. And then there's another situation. Now, you, you coaches can relate to this. I recruit this kid, you know, he says, I want a full scholarship. And I'm, you know, yeah, no, no problem, because back in them days, we had a lot of scholarships. I'll talk about that later. So he said he's run the 60 meter. Fine, told me his time, and I was, I, was, I was really impressed. So I said, full scholarship, what else do you do? He said, oh, that's it. I said, you want a full scholarship just to run the 60? I said, son, for a full scholarship 60, you got to run the marathon also. <laughs> you know, back in, back in the olden days, where I came up, you know, we ran the one, the two, and the four, didn't think nothing of it. But now they want to specialize, you know, no, you, no, you want to run that, you know, you want to get percentage. You don't get the whole thing. You want the whole thing, that means the marathon also, whatever, okay? Um, I remember one time, we had just broke the world's record. Uh, we, had, we held the world's record for four months, three months, in the distant medley, and we was excited. So we go to the NC2A championship, the big day, and we just know we're going to kick ass. And, um, and all four of the guys were from New Jersey. So we go to the NC2A championship, and would you believe Arkansas had a guy to anchor 356. And my kid ran at about 406. But you know what? But we had the world's record in the DM for three months. That was a, hey, that was an honor. That was an honor. I remember a situation in Cobalt Hall in Detroit. A young coaches don't remember the uh, 120, 160 board tracks. Now we had, we had won the mile relay two years consecutive. So we said, okay, this time, you know, we're going to 
do something no other college has ever done. We're going to win the mile relay three years in a row. Okay, my, my time was so good that nobody can touch us. So I told the guys, just think about practice, easy running, just relax. You win, after you win, we'll go have dinner. You don't have to spend your meal money, it's on me. Okay, not realizing these guys, I don't want to call them no names, they had got together that night, they're going to break the world's record. They're going to break the world's record. And you know what happened? My leadoff man jumped the gun. That was the only time in all my years of my coaching I wanted to kill the SOB. <laughs> That's, the <laughs> That's the only time I wanted to kill. Because there was no reason. No reason. They're going to break the world's record. Give me a break. You know what I mean? But those are part of, a, part of coaching. And then another, another time, everybody know Coach Moon. We do a lot of 500 running, a lot of 600 meter practice, you know, what have you. So we're in Detroit and um, uh, in the finals of the mile relay. My team is way out in front. My ankle man, I mean, he's so adept to running 600. He was running the 600 meters the whole race. Now, the officials lost time, lost track for how many laps? So my kid was still running, and the officials are still looking, and I'm up in the stands wondering what the hell's going on. Because they ran two laps longer. And my anchor man didn't realize it because in practice he ran them 600s. He thought it was normal. You know, but that was another incident. Then, I, you know, I had the honor, and I was independent relays, and now. Uh, my, my girls was running the mile relay, and this is the first time I had a female split 49. Wow. I, I, I was timing it. I didn't believe it. I looked at it, then they say, 49 point, Flirtisha Harris split 49. And, uh, to me, I thought that was a utopia. I said, holy shit. Look, at, <laughs> look how fast this girl, you know, and look how fast the girls are going now, what have you. But that was, that was just fantastic. Now, another, another time, now you're going to just, this will really kill you. But you track coaches, you know what times are. So I had this quarter mile, matter of fact, he's here now. I had this quarter mile that I recruited from New Jersey. He was running pretty good in New Jersey. Matter of fact, uh, he was supposed to go to uh, Syracuse. Matter of fact, the coach Syracuse came in a few minutes ago and said I stole his, his girl, his guy. So anyway, in New Jersey, he was probably the number two and number three best quarter miler and, and two of the guys he never beat before. So you know, we're, we're practicing. So I said, today's workout would be three times 600. And I said, well, look, we're going to run about 124, 125 pace, easy, relaxed control, getting ready for the, uh, for the junior nationals in California. The first one, he went 118. So I'm saying, I, I'm going to say exactly what I said. Holy shit. <laughs> OK, but I didn't tell him, because I figured that He's going to die. He can't come back again. So he ran the second one, 118.4. So I'm saying, Are you and I still didn't tell him. The third one, 118. So what I told him after he said, Coach, how did I do? I, how did I do? I said, I said, Andrew, you are ready. He goes out to California, wins the Junior Nationals, Beat the kid in New Jersey, I'm not going to give his name, who he never beat before, and he runs, I think he went 45 point first time. But can you imagine, for you track coaches, running three 600s and 118, that's a monster. And of course, everybody know, later on, he wins, the, he wins uh, two gold medals in the Olympics. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to show you. Those 500, 600 works. <laughs> Now, I have the, the good fortune, I think I have seven couples on my team that's been married. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So we, we're doing something good socially also, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and also, um, and one of, those, one, of those, one of those couples, I mean, I, had, I have two outstanding, I call them my grandkids right now, Noel and Josephus Lyles, where are they? 
Great, stand up, stand up, guys. Where are they? They're over here somewhere. They had to go to bed. <laughs> well, anyway, they're the number two. They're, number, they're um, two of the best 400, 800 meter runners in the country right now. And they're off, offsprings of my, my two athletes from Seton Hall University. And I feel like they're mine, okay? Uh, there's another incident, 800 meter. I uh, recruited this kid from, from Albany. Went over to New York to recruit him. Uh, he's standing about 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, he was running the one and the two. And I knew he was too tall to be a sprinter. And I said to myself, if I get this kid, if I get this kid, maybe I can get him and chase him into a mile or a half mile or what have you, okay? Uh, long story short, he's telling me to speed it up. <laughs> Tracy Baskin at the NC2A championship at the 600 meter mark held his hands up. So everybody, everybody, all the coaches said, Coach Moon, did you teach those boys that? I said, I don't know what the hell he's doing. <laughs> he won the race with the idea of doing something like that. My last comment is this, on a serious note, on a serious note, for our sports, for you young coaches, we need more of you young coaches to go into administration to help our sport out. We need it badly. We, I know, <laughs> I know right now we are getting complacent, you love your job, and then now the salaries are getting good. But you know, we get to these, these conventions, we make rules and regulations, and we move them on to a lot of administrators who have nothing to do with track and field. We need you guys to somehow way get more involved you know, in the sports administration. It'll be a big help. Thank you and it's gone.